welcoming you to Chair Yoga for the care of Waldenstrom's. Macroglobulinemia sounds like, but not quite, leukemia, goes the song that one of our WM friends actually wrote and performed about, about Waldenstrom's, and it always sticks in the back of my head, these little lyrics. But I wanted to um, invite you today to join us in a class all about walking. And this is sort of in honor of the walk for Waldenstrom's that goes on throughout the entire month of September. But it is inspired by one of our board members and Waldenstrom's um, person, Pete Denardis. And he's started walking at the beginning of September 5K per day. So he's up to 122K for the month so far. And I wanted to talk to him to understand how he was personally affected by this disciplined practice. And he said, of course, I asked him all so many questions and he was so kind to answer all my questions. But he said he had definitely experienced increased energy. So he would come home from the walk and he'd be like, well, I think I can actually tackle a few other things on my list instead of, you know, kind of that sitting around mentality. I'm not saying that's wrong because you might need that on, on a certain day. But just talking to him, I, that was the biggest takeaway for me was number one, it was energizing. It did reduce his experience of neuropathy. And one of our friends here does a six to eight mile walk every day and has got incredible improvement from her peripheral neuropathy, does not experience it as much and it kind of saved her life. It was quote unquote, a lifesaver for her to, to, to do these walks. Um, and then just one last thing, I know we're a little late to the party on this, but I have created an IWMF wellness community team page that will support the IWMF's fundraiser to um, raise funds for IWMF so that we can keep doing what we're doing. We can keep the wellness program growing and we can keep the research being funded because we know as a rare disease, we don't get much government funding. I'm starting to understand these things from the inside now. So I will share that with you in the follow-up email and you can share that with your friends and family and you can go on a, you can go on a two minute walk and that can be your walk. You can walk in place in your chair and that can be your walk. This is a virtual thing that we're doing together at whatever time, whatever place is right for you. Um, that's one thing I love about the Zoom is we can do it from wherever. So today we're gonna to be supporting walking and that means we're gonna be stretching and strengthening all the muscles we might use while walking. And we're going to try to be inspired by Pete's discipline. And this is something that we practice in yoga, this discipline, this idea of every day doing something that supports my well-being. That might be a yoga tool, such as breathing, bee's breath, for example, is a great one. We can start that up. We're going to do that today. Um, you could do one or two of the stretches we do throughout class. You could do an arm salute, whatever it is, or you could get out and do a walk every day. But we do know that walking, you know, weight-bearing exercise is good for us. It's helping strengthen bones and, you know, strength and endurance and helping with heart disease, um, you know, reduced risk of heart disease. And you know all the good reasons why you want to go for a walk if you can. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to Scoot back, we'll do our usual warm up, kind of head to toe, and then I'm gonna add a few different things today for this support of walking. So let's get started just getting the energy and the blood and lymph flowing. I'm gonna bring my arms down at my sides, and I'm gonna inhale, lift the arms up, and as I exhale, I'm gonna bring the arms out and down. That's good. Big breath in, arms rising. Exhale, releasing. Let's get shaking the cobwebs from the corners here. Inhale. Exhale. Let's do three more together. Inhaling and exhaling. We have one of our 
members live joining us from her safari in Tanzania. Isn't that exciting? And she saw elephants and all kinds of animals today. Beautiful. And we'll take one more big arm swoop up and down, bringing the arms down by the sides and just rolling the shoulders up, back and down, maybe one at a time, shrugging it off. So we're coming into this present moment together in whatever state of being you're in. You could be lying in bed, just listening and imagining yourself doing these things today and being in the presence of the group. No matter how you're feeling, you're welcome here. Okay, I'm going to bring my arms out to the sides as if to welcome. And I'm going to arch my back a little bit, so lifting my heart. Maybe the palms coming back a little bit farther. And can you feel that stretch in your chest muscles? Nod your head, yes, if you feel it there. Yeah, beautiful. And then I'm going to interlace my fingers. And all I will do will be to just pull the arms away from my body a little bit. So I've kind of created some space in my upper back. All right, and then we're opening the arms wide. I'm just going to tip my camera down a little bit. Sorry about that. Opening the arms wide. And then exhaling, interlacing the fingers in front of the body and pulling the arms away. And let's take one more big stretch. Check. Uh, Get those chest muscles stretched. And last one, interlacing the fingers, pulling the arms away from the body. Sitting up tall, pressing the palms away, juicing up the fingers. Many of us caring for osteoarthritis in the hands or peripheral neuropathy in the hands. That's good, Karen. So nice to see you. I'm going to circle my wrists in a figure eight or infinity. And then I'll just shake the hands out and maybe massage my hands together, starting to get colder where I live. It, I actually was visiting a friend and we built a fire over the weekend. It was amazing. So I'm going to, maybe if you're somewhere cold, you might want to warm up your hands. Maybe you're somewhere warm and you don't need that. And then I'm going to cup my palms over my eyes, give my eyes a little break, roll the eyes around within the sockets. And I'm always so, so curious to hear how, di how the diagnosis of Waldenstrom's occurs with pe people. I've heard so many different things, including the um, ophthalmologist was noticing something different about the blood vessels in the eyes and caught that. So we care for our eyes in our classes. And then when you're ready, you can just massage the face along the contour of the face, smoothing out the brow. Self-care time. Anywhere at all, maybe along the sides of the neck, moving the lymph fluid down towards the heart. And then we can relax the hands into the lap. And we'll just get the bee's breath going. So I'll invite you to close your eyes. If you like, you don't have to. You could rest a hand on your belly, a hand on your heart, or you could just leave the hands where they are. We're breathing in as we exhale with the mouth closed, just going to create a humming sound like that of a bee.
And then just allowing that to continue to resonate. Raise your hands if you have practiced bees breath sometime outside of our class. Oh yeah, that's almost everybody in here. That's amazing, I love that. And that's for me too, I love it. It helps me over the weekend. I'll tell you a little bit more about it later in our, in our non-live chat or in our live chat, non-recorded chat, I should say. All right, so let's work the head and the neck just a little bit. I'm gonna bring my right arm to the right, spread my fingers nice and wide, curl the fist under around my thumb. And we can take that one more time. We'll just do two of these today. And then keeping the hand lifted, I'll tilt my left ear over to my left shoulder and begin to circle the palm. Easy breaths. That palm can move down just a little bit, letting both shoulders relax. And then we can bring that arm behind the back, take a breath in, and exhale, spin the chin down. So I'm letting both shoulders relax. Peeking at my left shoulder. Good. And then we're coming back to center and switching it up. I've got my left arm out, fingers spread wide. Curl that fist down and under. Just one more time, opening the palm wide, curling it under, nice stretch for the wrist. And then we'll keep that palm lifted and tilt the right ear to the right shoulder, circling the palm. Easy breaths. Moving down, down, down. And we can enter, we can um, rest the hands behind the back. Spin the chin down and take a few easy breaths. And releasing back up to center. All right, releasing back up to center, I'm gonna scoot to the back of my chair and I'm going to lift both legs up, lifting both legs up and I'm zipping up my core. I could hold onto my chair if I like, whatever feels good and I'm just going to do a few lifts now, just one leg at a time, lifting one leg at a time and feeling those quadriceps, the top of the thigh, contracting. And this is one of those walking muscles. So we're just warming up the muscles in the joints head to toe. And then we're going to stand and do some more stuff if that's in your practice today. All right, let's leave the right leg extended and we can circle the toes in one direction, stretching out the right ankle. Maybe you move the other direction. And then we'll reach the left leg out. Circle the toe. Move the other direction. And then release. I'm gonna move a little bit farther forward in my chair and I'm looking to strengthen my core with this. And the core is also really important part of walking. So I'm gonna zip my legs together like I had a mermaid's tail. And that mermaid's tail is lifted and my core is lifted and my heart is lifted. And this takes a lot of effort. I'm squeezing my legs together, I'm squeezing my knees together. Those adductor muscles that bring the thighs together, those are part of our walking movement as well. And then I'll release the legs down and just massage the tops of my legs for a moment. All right, and one more time, you could stay where you are or you could come a little farther forward. So we're almost balancing now. When we lift both legs up, it's a little, you might wanna sort of keep hold of the chair or if you feel safe doing so, you could reach one or both arms straight out in front. And I'm really zipped up, that's great. Take a big breath in 
And then relax everything down. You feel the work in the quadriceps. Yes, the work in the core, the work in the back. So let's open the stance a little bit and just bring a little fluidity into our movements, into our day. Moving in one direction, nice and easy and slowly with the breath. That's good. And moving in the other direction, nice and slow, nice wide stance. And then we'll come back to center and just slide that right hand up the right rib cage. And I'm filling up the right rib cage with my breath, inhaling and exhaling. And I might take one more breath like that. See if you can lift the rib cage with your breath. And release to center. Slide the left hand up the left rib cage. Breathing into the hand. See if you can feel the movement of your ribs with your breath. Good. And then you could continue doing it that way, especially if you have limited mobility in your shoulders. Or you could lift the arm up as we reach over to that left side. Got it. And releasing to center. That's beautiful, Jane. Inhaling the left arm up. You got it. And then we're going to do that one more time. This time I'll invite you to notice the left shoulder and let that be really loose. Beautiful, Catherine. Seeing how far up this left arm wants to go. And letting the right shoulder relax. Good. Come on back to center. Both arms out to the sides. And I'm going to point my heart over to the right here. Twisting my torso to the right. Inhale to center. Take a breath in. Exhale to the left. Twisting the heart to the left. And I'm just going to move from side to side. Got my very, very gentle twist that's helping to lubricate the spine here. Could do one more on each side. And then I'm coming back to center and I'm giving myself a good old fashioned hug, tucking my chin, thanking myself for getting out of bed, for coming to yoga, for having the discipline to return to yoga again and again to take care of myself. And then releasing the hands down and walking the feet back. Let's do some foot pumps. So I'm going to stretch my right leg out and pump the foot down towards the earth, peel the toes back. And Jane, I was thinking of you last Friday we did in Cardio Flow. We used the strap. We used the strap, the resistance band so you can put the resistance band around the forefoot and press it down for a little bit of strengthening of this part of the body. And I'm curious, with a thumbs up or a thumbs down, does that help your peripheral neuropathy? Or is it kind of hard to say? Yeah, we'll talk about it. We'll talk. <laughs> a couple more foot pumps. At least it's good for overall strengthening. Right, and that can help with balance as well, strengthening the muscles in the, in the feet, the calves, etc. So I got my left leg out, pumping the foot down, lifting the foot up. So these are, these are some things I might do to get ready to go for a walk. So my, so my legs are, you know, all my whole body's kind of juiced up. And that's the train going by, if you can hear that. <laughs> oh my goodness, the joys of Zoom life. Okay, and then we'll come back to center. And before we get up, I'm going to invite you just to close the eyes. And take some easy breaths. Maybe three breaths in a row. And then you can begin 
your journey to verticality if it's something that you choose to do today. And if it is, we're never in a hurry. We're never in a hurry to come up. So I might come up nice and slowly. I might take a moment to find a sip of water or reset my space. And I'm coming to stand. And I'm going to take care of my feet. So you could do this whether you're seated or standing. Coming to take care of my feet. I'm going to lift my toes, spread them wide, and dig them back down. Lifting, spreading, digging. Lifting, spreading, and digging. And then I'll leave my big toes pressing down. And I'm going to take a look down and ask, pretty please, all the little toes, could you please lift up off the floor for me? Maybe they listen, maybe they don't. And then I'll press my little toes down and maybe, maybe the big toes will lift. So I'm looking to alternate. Little toes lifting, big toes pressing. Little toes pressing, big toes lifting. Maybe one more on each. All right, and then definitely, definitely part of my warm up for going on a walk would be to do some calf raises or tiptoe floats, as I like to call them. So I'm coming up onto my tiptoes and I'm floating my way down. And I might decide to challenge my balance today by bringing one or both hands off the chair and involving my arms. and adding the mindfulness of the breath. So this takes it to a whole other layer. Right? You can keep one hand on the chair all, at all times. And you can decide to sit as well if that would be preferable for you. All right, and I think I forgot to say welcome to Mike because he was maybe getting set up. Glad you're here today. Let's do three more. Lifting up onto the tiptoes and floating your way down. And one last one. All right, that's beautiful. And then I'm just going to walk it out walking it out. And when I'm walking, I'm swinging my arms, opposite arm, opposite leg. My legs don't have to lift very far up off the earth to start. And I tell you, I did go for a walk this weekend and I think I set a new walk speed record because I had my arms really pumping and they really helped me maintain my balance and my forward motion felt more possible, right? Because the arms were involved. Five, four, three, two, one. All right, taking a stretch, hands to the back of the chair. If you're seated, you could do a forward fold. Maybe just finding some breaths. One more breath here. And then slowly making your way up, stepping forward, and I'm gonna come down into my chair pose. If you're seated in the chair, you can come to the edge of the chair and lift both legs straight out. If I'm standing, I'm gonna sink into my knees and bring my hips back, right? So I'm kind of like I had a tail, I were like lifting my tail. And if you have low back tenderness here like I do, don't forget to pull the belly towards the spine a little bit, engage there. I'm isometrically pushing my feet apart. So there's a lot of engagement in the outside of my glutes, in my glute muscles, in my thighs, in my hamstrings. Those are all the muscles we need to walk practically. I'm going to lift my arms straight out in front or just keep them at my sides. 
right? So my gaze is straight ahead, right? You come out of it, right? If you have knee issues, come out of it. And then I'm gonna come up nice and slow and bring the arms down, let them swing for a moment. So we can do some pulses like that. I'm gonna sink down with the arms back. And as I inhale, I'm gonna come up and swing the arms all the way up. Exhale, arms coming back, tail is lifted. Inhale, swoop it all up. That's good, Carol. Exhale, sinking down. And one more, inhale. Exhale, sink down, arms back. Isometric, push the feet apart. One more breath. And then we'll release and come back up to stand and take a wider stance. Taking a wider stance, I'm just gonna circle my hips, get some fluidity into my hips, and move the other direction. And then I might flow a little bit, either sliding the hand up the rib cage or lifting the arm up and over to bring some space into my side body with my breath. One more on each side. Both legs are engaged and strong. You got it, Sarah. Last one. All right, and then I'm turning towards my chair. I'm gonna come into my usual warrior one. I've got the right foot forward, left foot back at an angle, and I'm sinking into my right knee, squeezing my left glute muscle, and I'm getting a good stretch in my left psoas or hip flexor muscle. Right, so option to stay here or bring the hands to heart center. Bringing the hands to heart center, I'm inviting you to take two warrior one breaths with me, breathing in through the nose and maybe sighing it out the mouth. One more like that. All right, and then we're straightening both legs, shortening the stance, and tipping the heart forward, folding forward, coming down to whatever degree feels good. Pull that belly back towards the spine and tuck the chin. And you could always keep the head lifted if you experience glaucoma or vertigo or anything else that doesn't feel good. All right, wonderful friends, walk your way up. Now I'm looking to strengthen my left glute muscle and hamstring. So I'm pouring the weight into the right foot and I'm gonna kick that left leg up and bring it back down. My toe is pointing down towards the earth as I do this or I'm just envisioning doing this. If this doesn't feel possible for me today, I can go as slowly as I like. I can skip whatever I like. Maybe I could keep my leg lifted for just a millisecond. Big breath in, and then let's step that left foot down. That's good, Anne. And take a step back, both legs. We'll take a downward facing dog or a forward fold, or whatever would feel good to you here to just a little counter pose. You got it. Come on up when you're ready, stepping the left foot forward, right foot back at an angle, bending into my left knee. My torso is upright, I'm squeezing my right glute muscle, pulling my belly towards my spine, and maybe bringing my hands to heart center. I could keep a hand on the chair if I prefer. Can we take two warrior one breaths together in through the nose, out through the mouth. It's beautiful, Marnie. In through the nose, out through the mouth. All right. Straightening the legs, shortening the stance. Coming into my pyramid pose, just taking a bow here. Coming to whatever forward motion feels good for you. I could tuck my chin. 
That's good, Susan. I could pull my belly towards my spine. And then in my mind's eye, I'm visualizing the next thing. We're going to be kicking that right leg up. So I'm going to slowly come towards that, weight in the left foot, kicking up the right leg. My goal is to strengthen my, it does strengthen the back as well, but the right glute muscle, the right hamstring. I could take maybe one or two more, or I could skip it. Maybe I want to keep that leg lifted for a millisecond. Good, and then we're planting it down and just walking it out a little bit. Now, every time I lift my leg up, right, I can feel that hip flexor working and strengthening. And that's all connected to a lot of the core here. So I'm really feeling my core as I do this, just lifting one leg at a time. And if I were to slow it down, I am standing on one leg for a little bit longer. You got it. One more on each side. All right, and then let's rub the hands together. I'm going to bring these fists to my low back, and I'm just going to slide my knuckles up and down the outside of my spine, my low back. Many of us caring for low back tenderness, myself included. And then I might just keep my fists here and squeeze my elbows towards each other and just lift my heart. Do a little tiny, tiny back bend if it feels okay to you. All right, and then we're coming up and taking that sip of water if you need it. All right, so I'm going to make sure I have something to hold on to for this. And I'm going to bring the weight into that right foot. And I'm just lifting that left leg out to the left. Let me do this so you can I don't kick my chair. Lifting the left leg out to the left. So I'm getting those side glutes are getting strengthened. Good. And then I'm just going to switch sides. Weight in the left foot, lift that right leg out to the right. Or maybe a total of five. Beautiful. And then I'm going to stand and I'm just going to sweep the leg to the front and the back. Good, and then sweeping the opposite leg, swinging it to the front, the side, the back. And then let's try one more thing here, weight in the right foot. I'm just going to do some leg circles. The building strength by standing on one leg and loosening up the joints. You can switch side when you're ready to switch sides. And sometimes uh, when I practice something like this, and this might not be for you, I will actually stand on one block so that I can do the full, my toe doesn't, you know, kind of get in the way. Um, so that's an option for you at some point. It doesn't have to be right now. I just wanted to kind of put that out there for the future that you could use a block and swing the opposite leg and kind of swing it free. And it feels pretty good to do that. All right. Let's do one more thing. We do this sometimes, and it is actually really good for the muscles used for walking. It's called the goddess pose. Goddess pose. Any goddesses in the house? And you could be a man and still have goddess energy. I'm, I'm, I'm happy to tell you. So I'm taking a wider stance. My toes and my knees are pointed out to the sides, kind of like Charlie Chaplin. If you do have knee issues and you're concerned about your knees, you might keep the toes pointed forward. And I'm going to bend into my knees. And my knees and my toes are pointed in the same direction. You can really feel this on the adductor side of things. So I'm squeezing my thighs towards each other. Isometrically, I'm really strong here. 
and I'm gonna bring one or both arms out to the sides. I'm gonna inhale and lift everything. Exhale and sink down, that's good. Breathing in, pushing off. Breathing out, sinking down. Let's do three more, inhale. Sink down, deeper, deeper, deeper. Pull the belly towards the spine. Inhale. Exhale. And last one, best one yet. Exhale, sink. And then come up nice and slow. And let's do one more little march. So I'm walking in place and I might turn away from the monitor for a moment and find something to look at, maybe out the window or that's farther away. And as you do this, see if you can widen your awareness out. So not only are you walking and feeling the, the body moving, but you could move your mind to like the center of your core, all the space in front of you, all the space to the sides of you. You could have an awareness of what's behind you. And then you can add the layer of the breath. So we're gonna take three breaths in through the nose, out through the mouth. Taking those next two breaths at your own pace. One more breath. All right, really good job today, guys. I'm gonna one last stretch here and then we'll come to sit. And this is a good hamstring stretch and a good back lengthening stretch that can definitely be incorporated to your warm up or warm down from walking if that is in your practice. When I'm ready to come sit, I will do so mindfully, feeling all those muscles that I just engaged, right? The glute muscles, the quads, the hamstrings. And come to sit nice and slowly. The edge of my chair here, I'm just crossing my right ankle over my left knee. And if we're only ever moving our hips in one direction, right, this might feel like a, quite a bit of a stretch. So we do need to stretch the hips. I've got my right foot flexed, not pointed here. And I'm leaning my heart forward, softening my shoulders, right? If I have a rounded back here, that means I need to sit back and get a nice straight back. where you can do just whatever feels best. It's good. Come on up nice and slow, cross the knee over. Roll that right ankle a few times. Taking the arms out to the sides and imagining my heart is a camera. I'm gonna point my heart to the right and take a picture of something on the right side of my room. Let the arms drop down. I'm gonna take a breath in. I might exhale and twist a little deeper and get a shot of something else with my heart camera. There might be one more little notch deeper you want to go here and another little picture of something with your heart camera on the right. And then coming back to center nice and slow, and crossing that left knee, left ankle over the right knee, you know what I'm saying. Go ahead and flex that foot, and lean forward, softening the shoulders, maybe even lowering the gaze. and releasing up nice and slow and taking that 
knee all the way over, that left knee all the way over, the arms out to the sides. You can circle that left ankle. And I'm twisting my heart camera to the left, taking a picture of something on the left side of my room, letting the arms drop down, a breath in, twist a little deeper to the left if it's in your practice. And we'll take one more picture here to the left. And slow release. Back to center, take a big stretch. And then you've got some options, my friends. Um, for the next one minute, you can sit in your chair or you can lie on the couch or lie on the bed or lie on the floor. Maybe you're already lying on like a massage table or an exercise table. Some of you have those. If you are somebody who feels comfortable getting down onto the floor, um, a nice way of doing that is using something to help you get down onto the floor, such as the chair. And, you know, take the time to do this at the end of a walking session to actually come to recline, completely recline. Maybe there's something under your head, maybe something under the knees, right? Thinking of our friend in Tanzania, it's now almost 10 o'clock her time. So this might feel really good to come to recline. If you're seated in your chair, just feel the support underneath you. And we're gonna let go of effort throughout the body, starting with the head and neck. Taking a breath in, letting go of holding tension or effort in the shoulders and arms. Letting the arms be really relaxed and heavy. traveling down the entire body, the length of the spine, into the hips, the low back, all the way down both legs into the feet. And we can feel the vitality in the body from our practice. We can know that we're more than a physical container. Maybe just for a moment longer, we can marinate in our own essence. See if you could take two or three more breaths. And then when you're ready to come back into your body, you can make some little movements, fingers and toes, stretching the arms overhead. If you're reclining, you could come roll to one side and then come to sit. So I'm just gonna come to sit where I am so we can close our class here. Coming up to sit and maybe lowering the gaze or closing the eyes. And we'll take the hands to heart center. And close our class with three bees breaths. Imagine the sound of your bee is connected and vibrating along with the sound of all the other bees, the Weldenstrom's bees in our IWMF garden. So breathing in. Thanking you so much for your practice today. Namaste. Thank you, friends.
I hope to see you soon. We've got cardio flow on Friday. And then we have yoga nidra on Sunday. So we've got a lot going on. I hope to see you for either cardio flow or yoga nidra. You can always reach out and grace at IWMF. If you'd like any information about that or classes or maybe getting involved with the walk for Waldstrom's. We have a new um, teen page that is our wellness community. I hope you'll join me.